Welcome everybody again to Panther Line 2019. We're here at Georgia State University. We're in the women's locker room in this press area that just looks so awesome, awesome. I am Eric Thomas. I am the minister. I don't think I told you guys my gamer tag from before, but I'm with Ferrell's Conclave, PCX. Um, we're here today to talk a little bit more about some things that you might not think about in esports that is now starting to come to the forefront because it's of the popularity and because of the play that's happening. So I feel a little underdressed here. Um, I didn't wear my suit and tie here, but I brought some of my friends who have their suits and ties. They look very good up here, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves. And um, I think you're going to learn something today that you'll be able to take with you from here on out. So as I pass the mic again, I want you to introduce yourselves, uh, tell, them, tell the audience who you're with, and also um, tell them how did you fall in love with video games. So my name is Lauren Cicinelli. I am a registered dietitian with Northside Hospital Sports Medicine Network. Um, and I would say the first time I, I remember playing video games, we didn't have any at home, so I actually had to go to the dentist that's how I would play video games for the first time. They had a Sega in the office, and that was the first time I ever played games. My name is Matt Lopez. I'm the senior sports specialist for Northside Sports Medicine. Um, so for me, I'm a physical therapist, and video games for me started when I was young with my brothers growing up, uh, watching them play when I could, sneaking in some games in between them playing. And then from there, it just continued through high school, college, to, to this day, it's been a a good connection for, for us. Hi, my name is Brian Finn. I'm the lead athletic trainer for Northside Hospital. Um, grew up playing in the car, Game Boy only. Um, you know, you got those long family trips. That was it. That was the rule. We weren't allowed to have anything else inside the house. So, yeah, I was, I was avid. Uh, Tetris and Ninja Turtles on the Game Boy was, was my games of choice on that. I got it taken away a few times, uh, but I knew where it was in top closet. My mom would put it there, I would get it and put it back. <laughs> um, so, all right, so um, I think what everybody's picking up on, we have a kind of a physical, medical um, type of content that we're going to talk about today. Um, so, one of the things that when I educate my parents about bringing their students into esports or bringing the students into video gaming as an industry, um, they talk about a bunch of the different career pathways, but also talk about some of the things that are, are now being bringing negatives to the industry, if you will. And so I think just like any other sport, and I've said this before, esports mirrors professional sports or traditional sports. And so what this panel is going to talk about a little bit is about how are those mirroring are images actually playing themselves out? <laughs> no pun intended playing themselves, but playing themselves out in the esports arena. So we're going to start here with our dietitian and our diet and how does that work in? And we're going to go down the panel and feel free just to kind of, again, talk about what you do and what you've seen in this particular sport, because it is a sport. I know a lot of people don't want to say it is, but it is a sport. And how do you see um, some of those negatives being played out and how can our students and our prospective professionals start to combat those things. So from a nutrition standpoint, I think it's very important because especially if we're sitting um, playing games for an extended amount of time, we want to make sure that we're getting the nutrition really to fuel ourselves appropriately. Um, we don't want to be over fueling. We don't want to be under fueling either. Um, so trying to get a good balance of that nutrition, trying to keep our blood sugar steady, that's going to keep our energy level steady. We're going to be able to pay attention better. We're going to keep that stamina longer. Um, so that's really our big goal with the nutrition side of things. For myself, uh, our division is elite performance therapy. So we do work with elite professional athletes, and that carries over into esports as well, like you mentioned. So the same way that we would treat the Georgia State basketball team, we're going to treat the esports athletes. So what I look at is for those prolonged gaming periods of 8 to 12 hours, it's going to lead to neck pain, back pain, wrist, hand problems. So a lot of the, the best players in the world have had to retire early due to these types of injuries. So speaking to the high school crowd, we want to get ahead of that while before those injuries kind of manifest themselves so that we can keep them healthy and, and be gamers for a long time, not just into the, the mid-20s, essentially. So we look at different performance programs as far as educational piece is, is huge on proper posture, what sort of stretching should I be doing instead of just shaking my hands out every few hours, 
um, can make a big difference as far as preventing injuries and improving performance as well. It's like any other sport. We want to come at it with our five-prong process. We want to get engaged with mobility and exercise. We really want to make sure that we're doing things that are going to help diffuse the stress and energy that they're occurring and sitting there recruiting over periods of time while they're playing. I mean, they're there for anywhere between like, we're just talking like upwards of over 10 hours sometimes they're sitting there and that's on their personal time. These competitions can run up to four hours long. You know, that causes a lot of stress to build up. And then we start to think about what does a pro athlete do? Where are we really trying to direct this generation of sport now? And we want to start focusing on prep. Let's start talking about activation. You know, I was just watching, and um, we were talking about Kovacs a little while ago. And this is eye training stimulus that we're trying to develop better tactics in targeting and shooting. Um, and what we want to draw that kind of simulation to is that of muscle memory. Well, let's say we're taking a track runner, for example. Um, they're going to do something called an A skip. They're working on their way the foot strikes the ground. We're working the way the eyes move in track. We want to get those assimilations there. You know, there are different stresses for different sports. It's uh, making sure that we're putting in the proper performa to address these stresses that they're going to occur with. Awesome. So even with that, I mean, this is very interesting. Um, I know a lot of parents that are on the wavelength of put those games down. Um, you know, you're spending too much time. I know as a parent with my younger children, um, screen time is a big deal. Um, and so when you talk about that, especially from the dietary side of things, what would be your recommendations for those young people um, as they're playing these games or what should happen as they're playing these games? So especially with screen time, we know that actually nutrition may be able to help alleviate some of the eye strain and that, that side of it. So we do want to make sure that they're getting a healthy diet with a lot of vegetables and fruits. The nutrients, the phytonutrients, the vitamins and minerals in there um, can actually help support eye health. So we want to make sure that they're getting enough of those. We also want to make sure that they're the fats in the foods are, are the healthy fats because that's going to help prevent dry eye. It can, again, help with that, that eye strain. Um, so trying to get more of those omega-3, those anti-inflammatory fats, things like salmon, walnuts, flax seeds, chia seeds, um, those are all really good sources of omega-3 fatty acids. Great snacks. <laughs> awesome. And so when we talk about regimen, um, getting prepared, playing these games, getting ready for these competitions, and I know you had alluded to it as well, what, would, what do we need to look for, or as parents, what do we need to try to implement when we're getting our kids ready to compete or ready to do these things when they get ready for esports or competing, going to their local gaming establishment for a tournament? It's a great question. It's, it's one that when you look at the spectrum of gaming, we have high school athletes, collegiate, professional, but also recreational gamers. So it's across the whole spectrum to where the social piece can be a big aspect that I think is important to engage. And we're really working to build a culture with our teams of having proper nutrition, having the proper warm up, having the proper kind of pieces that are all in play. So as far as a what I recommend to our athletes is at least once an hour, you're doing some wrist stretching and some tendon gliding exercises, which are different hand movements that we use to keep the tendons gliding as effectively as possible. Some of these games you're clicking at an insane rate to where to maintain that, we gotta make sure that the, the hand and the tendons that are actually gliding through there are working appropriately. So at least once an hour, you should be doing some sort of posture check to see have I turned into this posture? Okay, let's squeeze the shoulder blades back. Let's add a little chin tuck to it just to reset every hour. And then at least every three hours, trying to get up and, and be mobile. So whether it's a lap around the basement, whether it's going up and down stairs, going to grab your healthy snack, something to break up those long periods of, of gaming. I mean, you hit the nail right on the head there. <laughs> it's about cueing those muscles, keeping things active while you're going. Um, you know, we keep touching about it. And I kind of started talking about those five pillars. We're, you know, diet, first and foremost, is going to be paramount to anything for success. Exercise and mobility, we kind of 
broached that subject a little bit earlier about, you know, what is the proper warm up going to be looking like? Social aspects, and not just from within the gaming world, but make sure you're getting that outside too as well. Uh, remove yourself from that stressful element. Go do something that gives you joy outside of gaming too. Um, then there's restoration, sleep. You know, we often forget that that is a crucial time, especially at these high school and youth ages, that they're going to be growing and developing. Having these athletes go past midnight, 2 a.m., their cycles are going to get thrown off. They're going to have issues waking back up the next day or even potentially, you know, we're going to be more focused around 10 a.m. We're going to have a better reaction time at that point in the day. Um, you know, if we're sleeping until nine o'clock, we're going to throw that scale off and it's not going to occur until two or three. And last is going to be toxins. You know, what detrimental things or pressures are we feeling and putting into our body that can have adverse effects for our gameplay? Um, you know, it's that holistic approach. We want to make sure that we're addressing all of it and making sure you're getting out of sitting down for long durations of time and, and moving and keeping that blood flow pumping. I remember um, civil engineering was my trade um, before I started everything. And I remember even in the, in the office, at the contracting office, you know, we went away from the desk with the chairs to the um, desk that could elevate and actually standing. Um, I did a tour of a studio not too long ago, and I went by the offices, and they had the desks that were attached to the treadmills. And so, you know, really keeping that motion going um, as they were doing their different work. And I know that blood flow helps, again, with creativity and also helps with, again, the, str the strategy that I, in some of these games that a lot of uh, the players have to combat with that as well. Um, now, um, and if you were with me earlier, I talked about a lot of team building, but I also w talked about a lot of career pathways that are coming about as it, as it relates to this industry that are non-traditional. Um, could you guys talk a little bit about some of the career pathways that people can go into um, that are not just related to, so more related to your field um, that relates to every other sport that's out there? So for a physical therapist, it, it's a huge field that's really growing. So I first got into sports physical therapy because I really enjoy sports. Same thing could be true of these esports athletes. If that's your passion and you really love doing it, there's other ways to be involved because same for sports, I'm not a professional athlete, right? Many of us are not. It's the top, you know, 1% that are going to play that. Same sort of thing in esports. To get to that professional level is very difficult. But finding ways, if you love esports and medicine, physical therapy is a great way that we're seeing every professional sports team around the country in the major four also have a physical therapist attached to them. Esports teams should be no different. Um, so it's prepping the body, soft tissue work, talking through with other professionals, talking to the coaches about sleep s schedules and nutrition and that sort of piece that. PT is a, a very flexible route, and it's very enjoyable. It's a very, again, social kind of interaction as far as a career, which is why a lot of these gamers play esports is, is for that social aspect again. So athletic training is kind of like this unknown medical aspect in, in the healthcare world. Um, outside of collegiate sports, I mean, in professional industries, such as football like we're the person that runs out there when the athlete goes down to assess what that scene is it's kind of a culmination of emt skill sets with manual therapy skill sets and then good diagnostic tools uh, you know within this world you can take that and mold it to a variety of different sports like an atc has the ability to not only work with the football athlete but can go and work with a ballerina can go and work with a swimmer I mean, I had a, a woman that went and swam the English Channel. I was her medical support for that adventure, you know. So it's keeping an open mind and trying to put your passions into it. So, for example, I also have a strength and conditioning background, too, as well. So sports performance. These are different elements that we're bringing to the table for eSports. So you can go and, and get your CSCS or become um, even a certified personal trainer and have good do good research on what the stresses are 
and now start to apply that to this athlete in specific. It's what you do in any other kind of forum, right? We'd go and res research. If I'm working with the NHL, I'm going to see how the hockey body, the stresses are applied and what we can do different to make sure, A, we're going to prevent injury, B, make them better at what they're doing, and C, give them a life that they're going to be happy and longevity in that career with. Um, the other aspect, too, here is, is sports psych. You know, this is there's a psychological element too to gaming that needs to be addressed and has an opportunity for growth too as well outside of your normal you know S and C athletic training PT and and uh, basic medical kind of background. And the other piece is our, our chief of sports medicine, Dr. Vonda Wright. She has been spearheading this kind of esports piece and and collaboration with high res and north side medicine. So you think about a, a physician, or she's a surgeon, orthopedic surgeon. You think about him in the operating room, but she was there last week when we were doing physicals on site with our athletes. So even going the route more traditional of a, a physician, you can still be involved in, in this type of arena. I'll touch a little bit about on nutrition as well. So from a nutrition standpoint, dietitians are very diverse. Um, their dietitians are employed in the hospital setting, in food banks, in community outreach programs, um, in sports as well. So, um, and sports is, is a growing area for, for dietitians. So more and more professional teams, college teams, even high school teams are employing dietitians on their staff. Um, and this is definitely one of those areas where, where nutrition can make a big, big difference for the longevity, for the health and performance of these athletes. Um, I mean, I'm just taken aback, and I hope you guys are hearing this and hearing this information that, you know, some of the, non, again, non-traditional, and I like to use that word, non-traditional, because esports is a non-traditional sport. There are non-traditional career pathways inside of esports. Um, and and w if I could put on my coaching hat, I coach baseball, I play baseball, football. This is probably about 50 pounds ago. <laughs> um, but uh, just understanding that and kind of seeing some of the recent trends now with um, – more and more of the kids that I work with playing the same sport all year long. Um, how have y'all seen that in relation to esports coming about as a negative impact on the on the players? That's your typical chronic use injury. Um, so I mean that plagues anybody like you were saying that sticks that single sport. Um, you need to cross it variety of different planes. So if you're doing esports in a non-traditional non sports setting, it doesn't mean you can't play baseball. It doesn't mean you can't play soccer. You know, you want to do other things that are going to challenge your body to prevent you from falling into this continuum of repetition. Now we're starting to get those other muscles that work off of each other. You know, if I'm playing that sport and you're, I'm on the computer all day and I get that, you know, that turtle hunch that Matt demonstrated a moment ago, you know, this this has ramifications. Muscles in my body aren't working. You know what? Other muscles aren't able to turn off as a result. So we want to do something to contrast that. Maybe I start swimming to start working on my back a little bit more, and that will help encourage my posture. Um, you know, kind of find something that you're passionate about and go for it and have some fun with it. You know, that's the, the big thing is to make sure mentally you're, you're challenged and engaged too as well. And going back to one of the pillars about sleep uh, that Brian mentioned earlier, exercise and physical activity can be very beneficial as far as kind of the sleep quality and the circadian rhythm. So you're going to rest and recover better as well when you're sleeping, not gaming, because you're physically active during the day involved with baseball or track or whatever your other passion is that, that you choose to explore. So it's we think so much about the performance piece. It's not always just the the four hours of competition, but it's what are you doing for the other 20 that can make a big difference inside those those four hours. This is just such an eye opener for me. Um, I think I've talked about a lot of this with a lot of the parents and I, I stress parents because that's who I tend to educate. The kids know about this area. They're going to do what they like to do. But again, um, stressing the things that they ought to do is I think what we're kind of talking about here in this particular panel session. Um, and you guys hit the nail on the head over and over again, um, is really doing something different. And, and when I hear that, 
that's getting past that mental block that you may have on that particular level that you're on. Um, you're not exactly sure how to do, what way to go, but to do some things like swimming or running or lifting weights or, or even getting up and walk. I think um, we had a 24-year-old, the eSports champion, the Smite champion, he talked about it. He talked about walking around for about 45 minutes. He makes sure that he does that because, again, that lets him bring down that stress. And we talked about toxicity. You know, in this, in the eSports, you know, you, you look at your social media and you look at your Discord and there are so many things that are being thrown out there. You know, people saying that you, you, you're no good or they're saying all these different things. But again, being able to have an outlet to be able to just let off some steam allows you to relieve some of those stressors that will cause you to injure yourself if you don't allow that to um, be released. Um, oh, this is so, so, so informative here. Um, how long, wow, where do you guys see uh, this area when it relates to esports? Where do you see it going and where do you see it evolving to in the next few years? So I think this is really just the beginning, um, especially, and I'll speak on the nutrition side of it, but um, I think this is really the, the start of where we're really starting to focus on, on some of these things. I know that there are, there are different supplements and different things that people are using for, to support their gaming, um, but we want to make sure that it's, it's a, whole, a whole diet approach. Um, again, not just, not just what you're doing right at that, at that moment or right before, but we want to make sure that, that the nutrition is, is on board throughout the, the time. And I think that we will start to see more and more people paying attention to that um, and making sure that their, their nutrition is there to support their activities and support their gaming. Our division of elite performance therapy is an example of what's called performance physical therapy. So sometimes you think about physical therapy and think that's going to be pretty boring, little ankle weights and leg lifts. It actually can be a very engaging activity, and it's something that professional sports has embraced, and professional esports is going to as well. So I see into the future that each team will have a healthcare system like Northside Hospital that they will be a affiliated with to make sure off the, you know, off the field essentially they're getting the care that they need, whether it's soft tissue or stretching or recovery, all of those different pieces that each team will have a designated provider um, for that. I mean, it, it's off to a blistering pace right now. You guys are already professionals. You have professional organizations already set up. Um, you have full sponsorships going to a variety of NCAA programs. With that notoriety comes this next level of care regardless. And, uh, and I think, you know, Dr. Wright caught on it early. She sees that there is a need to address this population you know, whether it's stress related, posture related, you know, there are physical demands that these athletes are putting in day in, day out that have long term effects and that need to be addressed. And with that, you're going to see increased care by both having a proper medical staff being provided to them, both from the high school element, because now they have high school athletic trainers that they can go see while they're in school. Right, and then they make it to college, and then they can go see again an athletic trainer or a PT in that setting too, as well. Even a dietitian is probably on staff. I know they are on staff with these organizations. So now it's just making it the social norm, showing them that they are maybe a non-traditional athlete, but they still get all the same rights as any other program does. They are still entitled to go and get these different things that their body's telling them they're having an issue. They can still go get seen at high level doctors and practitioners to make sure that they're getting the proper care. Um, and it's just gonna jump off from here. I mean, what, there's over 600 million or something time of viewers on these games. ESPN Plus, I was watching the other day, like it's, it's here and uh, it's only gonna grow. And you're gonna see these other programs, these other institutions start to recognize it very quickly. It's, it's refreshing for me. Um, you were talking about the viewership. I mean, you know, I said it before. Um, you talk about the Super Bowl. You talk about the NCAA tournament. You talk about NBA tournament. You talk about MLB World Series. The viewership for a lot of these competitions right now are eclipsing those by leaps and bounds. And so but that, that also talks about those who are engaging. So from a professional side, we talked about earlier, you have your elite athletes, but you have your 
your I like to call them your uh, your community athlete. <laughs> they're playing as well. They're putting in just as many hours. They're doing a lot of the same things. But again, and I think some of the some of the um, teams don't know that they have that access that you were talking about to those same um, professionals to help to make sure that they're competing at their highest level or just making sure that they are maintaining their health. Um, I think that's that's one of the things that we're really talking about here. And I want to make sure that you guys out there know and understand that, you know, health is where it is. I mean, if you're sick, you can't play. So <laughs> if you want to play, you have to be healthy. So that's what you're, you're, what you're eating. That's how you're playing. That's what you're doing in between your play. Uh, sleep is very important. I have a five-year-old right now. We call him our college student. He doesn't want to sleep at night. He, he just stays up, stays up, stays up, and he waits us out. But uh, we let him know that he's always growing and developing in his sleep. And because in eSports you can become professional at a younger age, um, I think that's, again, very, very important with their cognitive development as well. So just seeing where these jumping off points are for career pathways, things that you have to start thinking about. We don't know. Esports is still forming. So we don't know what those repetitive injuries or that movement is going to bring to what that um, you talked about the psyche, what the mental health is going to be from all these players playing these games for as long as they've been playing these games. So those things are just now coming out when it comes to football, baseball and basketball. They're seeing what those repetitive injuries are now what's happening with that, with the concussions and things of that nature. So just because it looks harmless, it's a video game, that doesn't mean it's not harming us. Um, we don't know prolonged eye exposure, what that's actually doing. So again, we have to do the dietary things, the physical things, the preparation things that are gonna help us to just survive longer in a career that we wanna be in or just to have fun. You still love playing games. We want you to continue to love playing games. We want to get you to a point where you can play games forever. We don't want you to get to a point where you got to put down the controller because you can't even pick it up because your fingers don't work anymore. <laughs> so we want to make sure you guys are doing that. Um, last thing, is, is there anything, any programs or anything you guys have going on where um, some of these parents can go check out to get some more about the information about this or they can start plugging in? We are, like you say, education is a huge piece, and we're on the cutting edge right now. So we're still developing kind of all of the proper programming and what the best nutrition is and all of these pieces and, and putting that into one package. Northside Hospital Sports Medicine does have a website, sportsmedicine.northside.com. So that's an area that if you're interested in seeing one of our providers, we're happy to bring you in. We speak your language. We understand what's um, what you're passionate about, and how to best help you, like you say. So as we look into what's the best research to do to find out what is the long-term effects of gaming for 8 to 12 hours a day, that's exactly what we're doing right now. And, and that's, a big, um, that's a big ask of us. Of we have to educate our colleagues as well because there's not a lot of healthcare professionals doing this yet. So that's, uh, that's kind of our professional responsibility to, to bring that out like knowing claw position versus a palm position while you're on a mouse or e like that that's huge and being able to talk to the athlete is paramount and making sure that they're getting the recovery necessary you know uh, just posture we, we're we're compiling information we're putting data together that was one of the reasons why we decided to partner with skillshot why we're investing into these different groups is because we want to learn more we need to figure it out like should these kids be wearing blue lenses while they're watching these screens to help decrease the eye fatigue you know what are the ramifications of this reflection taking place um you know posture is a huge thing you know if they're playing the keyboard or they're slouching and what does that do to their left hip mobility compared to their right hip mobility um you know it's don't be afraid to turn off the social media and go out and go lose yourself and some wilderness someplace else you know I, I read an article the other day about in japan they'll write prescriptions for tree soaking have you heard about this they you go out for 30 minutes at a time to go and just be in nature and to be around things that aren't overstimulating you to help reset and that is necessary too much of a good thing is a bad thing you know and we are creatures of habit and we this goes for anything um any sport any pleasure, it's about balance in life. And the quicker that we can realize that, the longer your career will be. 
Well, guys, I hope you really were able to take something away from this um, particular panel. I know it kind of got into a more serious, <laughs> sober mood, but again, it's very important for us to understand what it is we're doing and where we're trying to go with this awesome um, thing that we've been given called esports and the video game industry. Um, so just again, make sure that you're thinking holistic, the whole person. It's, it's from beginning to end. You, you want to play games. You want to live a life. You want to do all these different things. And so there are things that we all have to do um, and to make sure that we're able to do it effectively and for a long time. So thank you guys again. Um, I'm Eric Thomas. I'm with Ferrell's Conclave. And so when you guys, make sure you check out Northside and see what they're doing. Um, I think they're doing some amazing things. And you're going to see this become a part of esports in the in the vernacular of esports as we go forward. So thanks again. Um, you can you can visit me at um, pcxnow.com. You can go to northside.com. Sports medicine. Sport, dot northside dot com see I'm, I'm pretty good i got a good pretty good memory i've been working on it i've been working on it guys but guys thank you again so much for this information i think you've um, helped a lot of parents to see a different light on different things and i hope you also inspire some young people who wanted to be a nurse wanted to be a physician who wanted to get into some other fields besides and they were just trying to figure out well how can i still be a part of the video game industry and part of esports so thanks again um again we're here at georgia state university pantherland 2019 so please make sure you guys Continue to play, play well, and be healthy.